the Bright Armenia political party, a representative of the Yelk bloc. And I will ask my colleague to uh, help me with, for five minutes. I will be back as soon as possible. Can I? Okay. Uh, Edmund, the floor yes. is yours. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, first of all, dear co-chairman, Mr. Sajad Kirim, dear co-chairman, Mr. Ashotian, dear member of European Parliament, uh, members of European Parliament and uh, my colleagues. Uh, I would like to use this opportunity, first of all, um, to answer uh, our colleague, Mr. Ashotian, and also to answer to your questions, which I know that you have questions because of um, also his uh, remarks and his speech, and also to give you information about uh, the current situation in Armenia, what is happening. Uh, today, um, we were in a process in the parliament of um, uh, the prime minister was, uh, was as a candidate um, uh, in the parliament today and, and he was not elected. Why? Because uh, according to our constitution, we have to go through this process, which is somehow uh, you know, sur surprisingly interesting, you know, why we are doing this, but we have to go through two cycle electoral process in the parliament and fail during these two cycles in order to dissolve the parliament, which is a total consensus in Armenian political arena. So there is consensus that we have to have uh, parliamentary elections as soon as possible in order to overcome political crisis. Uh, there is no other way to overcome this crisis. It's not possible. Uh, uh, you see that uh, Mr. Ashotian uh, was speaking about the lost opportunity, that we lost uh, this year's opportunity to uh, implement uh, SEPA agreement. But uh, first of all, I don't think that we lost the opportunity. Uh, we did what we, what we uh, managed to do, first of all. Then uh, secondly, I think uh, everybody understood that uh, we, we were in a situation of crisis management and it was not possible to do all the reforms that we promise or to even launch reforms that we promise because we were in a deep crisis. And in order to finish, in order to overcome this crisis, we are going to have a snap or, or, uh, or extraordinary, I would say, uh, parliamentary elections. So um, about the political situation, uh, you know that uh, as also Mr. Ashutian said, we have uh, uh, the process of adoption of new electoral code. So on Monday in the Parliament, we'll start another session for uh, this new electoral code, which is more inclusive than the electoral code that we have. According to this new electoral code, uh, we diminish the threshold for parties from 5% to 4%, for alliances from 7% to 6%, and also we give uh, opportunity of non-partisan uh, citizens to participate in party lists. So before we had 30% places, now we have 40% places. And uh, we think that in this situation, uh, in this extraordinary situation, the new electoral code will help uh, parties and new for newly formed parties as well, as well to, to, to uh, participate in elections and to be represented in the parliament. Uh, otherwise, we will, we will keep the, the old electoral code, which was criticized by all of us because of the territorial rating system when one oligarch was running in one territory and, and, and gaining, uh, consolidating all votes by bribing people. So this was the, the, the system that we had before. And since we targeted this electoral code, and since we have in a governmental program that this government is going to change the code and to have new electoral code and then run for elections, so we are trying to change it. But uh, there is no any, any interference in any uh, political party's internal matters and the parties and the parliamentary parties, they are free to express their uh, concerns. They are free to uh, uh, propose any changes in electoral code. And I hope that uh, our colleagues from the Republican Party, they will participate in Monday's extraordinary session 
and they will uh, propose their uh, proposals for new electoral code. I know uh, one, one proposal which is about open list, uh, which I think we are ready to, to debate on this as well. So we have now a proportional system that we are, we are proposing proportional system for the upcoming parliamentary elections. As for the observation, uh, I, I join to Mr. Ashotian's uh, demand, uh, and I also demand and I also uh, ask for the European Parliament colleagues to come to Armenia as an observers and observe our extraordinary parliamentary elections, which is due to, in December, as we know, according to uh, some calculations, uh, I think it will be on December 9. So you can, you can plan uh, starting from today, or I think you are planning already, and which, which, is, which is very important for us to have uh, observation missions from European Union, from ODHR, from OSCE, from Council of Europe, and we are going to invite all uh, possible partners who are observing elections to observe our elections, to talk with uh, parties, party representatives, with everybody, and uh, to know, to learn all information from, from the ground. Um, as for the, as for the uh, judicial, judicial reform, uh, as you know, we also targeted uh, the branch, judiciary branch, uh, as, a, as a corrupt, as non-independent, as non-competent branch of power in Armenia. So, of course, it's a challenge. Of course, we have, to, uh, we have to reform the system, but again, not during these crisis management times. So we will start judiciary reform uh, after, after elections. And uh, thank you, uh, dear colleagues and, and representatives of European Commission, uh, for, for, for your readiness to support our reform agenda. So, during the last six months in Armenia, Armenian government started unprecedented fight against corruption. And I think uh, you learned about these cases, case by case. We are having uh, new uh, disclosures, and, and, and um, this is, this is uh, very important for us to have a government which has zero corruption. And I'm sure right now in our government, I can say in ministerial level, in a high level, which are appointed after revolution, that we don't have corruption. Of course, corruption is a systematic, systematic uh, thing, systemic thing, and, and, and we have to fight institutionally, not in uh, having in speeches, as, as said Mr. Ashotian, and we will do so. Of course, we will do so, and I think uh, the struggle already started, and it is very successful. Uh, the important part of it is the political will. Since there is political will in place to fight corruption, then I hope that uh, the fight will be successful. Otherwise, you know, um, I, don't, I don't see, I don't see uh, any way of development of our country without, without fight against corruption. As for the Yerevan municipality elections, uh, we already had uh, a big electoral uh, cycle, I could say, after revolution, uh, which was Yerevan municipality elections and some other uh, small and big cities. So, uh, and uh, it was free, transparent, and uh, all parties that are participating in elections, uh, as I remember, 12 parties uh, participated in Yerevan municipality elections. Uh, all of them were welcoming the results of the elections. And uh, now we have three parties in the Yerevan municipality. And I think if we change electoral code, so we can have uh, not three parties in the parliament, but we can have four parties in the parliament. Because according to constitution, even if one force, one political force will take 90% of votes, uh, opposition has guaranteed seats. One third of the parliament should be opposition. So, uh, and, and we, we changed the electoral code in order to guarantee 
more than three parties. So four parties will be in the parliament if we change electoral code. This is in a situation when the party uh, couldn't, couldn't pass the threshold. So this is very important, I think, for newly created parties. And also, I think this is very important for these extraordinary times in Armenia, because uh, there are complaints that euphoria is very high and, and, and one party can take more than 80% of votes, but on the other hand, we'll, we'll have these guarantees in electoral code. And this will change the situation as at, we, we had in Yerevan municipality elections. So if we have this kind of mechanism for the Yerevan municipality elections, we could have four parties in Yerevan municipality, but we have three parties because it was done by old electoral code. So, and, uh, and I, think, I think we will have other, other questions. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's very important to mention that in the new electoral code, we also, uh, we also have a, a provision about women participation in political life of Armenia. And according to uh, old, uh, or, or old electoral code, every uh, fourth in a proportional list should be a woman. Now we propose every third should be a woman, so, which is also a step forward. And for the, for the timing, we understand that you know, it's short time, I mean 45 days or 50 days. But since the electoral code is more liberal, is more open, is more inclusive rather than exclusive, so I think that uh, the short time for preparation is not a big deal and also opposition in Armenia for last 20 years were lobbying for proportional electoral code. So to say that uh, political parties will not be prepared for proportional voting, well, you know, it may be, you know, not that fair because all parties were lobbying for this. So then they know how to uh, create proportional vote and they know how to run in that kind of elections. Also, uh, Yerevan municipality elections were uh, held um, as a propor proportional elections. We don't have rating system in Yerevan, uh, Vanaz or Gyumri. So in three biggest cities in Armenia, we have proportional system, which is a totally proportional. No rating system, open or closed. So and, um, I think this is all. Uh, and um, I know that we are behind of time, but uh, I'm ready to answer to the questions of our colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marukian. Thanks for your engagement and for your comments. I think we, we still will discuss uh, the question.